Hey, Alpha Fam, welcome back to another episode of Alpha Commission. Today on Alpha Commission, of course, we're going to go over that green on the charts as Bitcoin continues uh, to push up, maybe go a little bit sideways, but uh, overall, we do see the market is taking this as a positive. In stocks, uh, we do see a lot of uh, mixed messages over here. Uh, jumping straight to the charts, uh, let's just go over the uh, EMAs first, and you can see that on the uh, hour Hourly, uh, we do have a very supportive look on our complex EMAs. If I zoom in, you can see that we are above the uh, 21s, the uh, 9s, and the uh, 4s over here, as well as the 200s. So that's bullish, 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 and bullish. Uh, we are kind of bumping our head into this 300 EMA level which is pointed down. So that does suggest that this area is going to begin to be a little bit of a, a tougher nut to crack somewhere between uh, 27.5 and up here to a 28,000. Guys, let's jump over to the six hour. On the six hour, we can see that we have a very similar picture uh, above the uh, 21, above the nine, above the four, bullish, bullish, bullish here. We're above the 300 EMA, so also bullish, giving a little bit more support and a little bit more confidence to this area that we're in. However, similarly placed is the 200 EMA over our head, and so also on the 6-hour, we have a little bit of resistance coming into that 27,700, and then uh, we have all this, uh, all these like 89s and uh, 100 EMAs just all wound up a little bit pointed down in that $28,000 area with a, a cap on it at a 28,500 of the 200 simple moving average. And so that whole region between 27.7 and uh, 28.5 could give the uh, six hour uh, traders uh, some headaches, but uh, we'll see how we push through it because if we can get a squeeze uh, through that 200, it could be uh, pretty powerful. But uh, we are on the uh, lookout for some possible rejections as we move up here, maybe just temporary, maybe just a pullback. We had a low. We're kind of getting in a, a nice kind of high area over here. And if we put in a, a higher low, then that would be pretty reasonable and still be uh, bullish. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the daily. Now, the daily does have that uh, alpha uh, nine knockout uh, coming up. So you do see the nine SMA and the uh, nine EMA are about to uh, cross. And usually when that happens, first of all, in this orientation, it is a bullish cross. We also see the uh, price action squeezing through the four EMA and the four SMA. So all of this is exactly what I've been telling you for the last a couple weeks that uh, bulls still had a chance and everyone was super bearish they thought we were going to drop to hell and i kept telling you guys that uh, the bulls have a chance and for a second you didn't believe me but it just ended up being a, a flash wick to the downside and uh, holding on to this level we are getting that squeeze uh, that i suggested was likely and uh, the only thing is that we are coming up into some heavy EMAs. And here, the Alpha 9 knockout, uh, exactly what uh, you know I named it to represent. It just gonna, it's going to kind of like punch it in the head. And so when this squeeze happens, very typically, uh, we see a pullback, okay? A pretty strong pullback in some cases. Now, it doesn't always happen, okay? So you can't, uh, you can't think of any, anything being 100% in trading. It doesn't doesn't always happen, right? But in a lot of cases, in more than 50% of cases, when you have an alpha nine knockout, you just get uh, sent back on your butt. And I think this is just the uh, market maker's way and the uh, algorithmic uh, way of shaking out uh, paper hands uh, when the uh, positive squeeze is on because they want that one last entry before they uh, 
they move things forward there. And so uh, we do have that coming up. Uh, overall, that's going to be a bullish cross. And as long as we don't uncross under that 27K critical level, then, uh, you know, all of this is just going to be a bullish pullback. Yeah, we could get a little bit of wicks, you know, even lower than that. But uh, again, as long as the candle body uh, sets above there and preferably in that 27.5 area, then uh, we're going to just continue with this squeeze to the upside, uh, probably to a 28,000. And then uh, we can just take it from there because as you saw on the other charts, we do have significant resistance. On the daily, not so much. Uh, on the daily, we are pretty free to explore these higher levels. And so maybe even 29,000 is in the cards uh, if you're on a, a day trading basis. Uh, if we are looking at uh, the uh, three-day, which does close uh, this uh, evening, then you are going to see that we have recovered more than 50% of the last three-day candle. And so that does bode well for us, okay? You can see that uh, if we get an engulfing candle above uh, 277, uh, so there's that number again, 277, that we are going to have a positive cross on the four SMA and the four EMA. And what's that, what that is going to do is actually allow us to have the potential to squeeze to the upside and maybe just negate this whole uh, move down. And uh, basically we did something very similar up here where we engulfed this candle. Uh, we got in between the uh, fours crossing, and then boom, it was just off to the races on that uh, three-day. So I will be looking at uh, 2027 as a very crucial uh, level. And then for reasons we've pointed out on the other time frames, 28,000 is going to be uh, where all eyes are going to be uh, focused on because we're going to start getting into some pretty heavy resistance where we could easily uh, reject at 28, which is the... Uh, the uh, 9 EMA up here, we could reject at 28.5, and then you saw, uh, you know, 29 over there. Uh, guys, uh, let's take a look at the 5-day, because the 5-day is also closing. And on the 5-day, this is just a uh, blink of the eye that a uh, flash wick down. It just got immediately uh, bought up. You can see we pulled all the way back above the 200 EMA on the 5-day, which is a quite strong showing. It suggests that we did not lose uh, macro structure here because uh, the five day gives us a good hint at what's uh, going on in the macro, even though it is one of those uh, medium time frames. It is the highest of the medium time frames there. And uh, we can see that it is well above the 300, which does continue to have a flat orientation. In other words, any movement to the upside, that's going to uh, get the uh, 300 EMA to be in a bullish posture again, which it hasn't been all the way since uh, basically back in a spring uh, 2022, it hasn't had a bullish posture. And so if we could just, uh, you know, go a couple more weeks on the five day and get that 300 EMA pointed up, we could um, we could consider that we might have continuation to the upside there. Uh, however, uh, you know, we do see that uh, the 300 SMA is giving us that hint of, you know, all the way uh, back here when, uh, you know, we just started to uh, you know, lose that 300. It was pretty much uh, you know, uh, you know, game over right there. But when we reacquired it, it was game was back on. You know, even the uh, the Uber Bears couldn't deny that when we recaptured both 300 uh, you know moving averages right over here. And since we've just back tested it. We literally did nothing but backtest it bullishly so far. So if you consider that um, on the uh, five day, the bottom of the market, right, was basically marked by this area underneath these uh, 300 uh, moving averages, the white lines, then what we can see is that we are now back on top of that, right? So we've essentially skirted past the bottom of the market. And, you know, if we just go back in time, the entire bull run was on top of that five day 300 uh, moving average pair. So if we're back on top of it and bullishly retesting it, then, you know, hanging on to that line uh, really bodes well 
uh, for the future of this market. And it would also indicate that should we break below it, which is a 24,500 ish, that uh, we could be back in that bear market territory. So, um, you know, just on a five day kind of EMAs kind of philosophy kind of perspective, uh, which I'm trying to offer you something a little bit different than some other channels, right? Uh, you would uh, just consider that maybe we're back in that kind of bearish zone where well great you know we get to uh, do it all over again right we get to reaccumulate and then take our profit later on but it just could take a while it could take a while however as long as we're just up here bouncing off of that 300 bullishly then uh, maybe it's just uh, up from here guys so uh, don't be a perma bear and uh, don't be a perma bull um, there's there's reasons uh, why this could break down and i'll show you that later in the episode but uh, so far, I do like what I'm seeing here. Bouncing off the 300 on the five day, bullishly, and then recapturing this 200 EMA on the five day. Are you kidding me? Those are very difficult EMAs to deal with. And the five day is handling them beautifully. The only thing I don't like is that this is still a technical squeeze to the downside on the uh, five day. And so if this thing comes back down too harshly, that is going to probably fulfill the criteria for that distribution wedge inside of the uh, EMA squeeze. And that could pop us down, you know, into that, uh, you know, $22,000 area, that $24,000, $23,000 area. And we really would not want to go lower than that because, uh, it, you know, things would just fall apart very, very, very fast. Okay, guys. So, uh, yeah, we are uh, still on alert uh, for the uh, five-day chart. That's why it is significant. Uh, let's go back to the uh, one day, uh, pardon me, the one hour, and let's take a look at a different perspective, something a little bit uh, more clear uh, that just tells a little bit more of a simple story uh, for those of you who just get distracted by a million EMAs. And you can see that, uh, you know, just on top, we are on top of that uh, Bollinger Bands midline. Now, if you just uh, think about the Bollinger Bands midline as, uh, you know, just kind of like an an oscillating harmonic motion, right? Where you you got kind of like those DNA strands, right? Like just just putting in like this uh, elegant dance around them, right? You can see that we are a little bit over on the top side, you know, for some time. And so should we dip down or go sideways, right? Like it really wouldn't be any skin off of our back. And so um, you know we would be. You know, just based upon the size of these areas on the one hour, right, we would be in an area that, yes, we could just pop up, but we're also in, you know, a size of a, uh, a movement here that would suggest that, you know, we could just go sideways or down for a little while, you know, since we've, you know, been bullishly popping up here, uh, you know, nothing goes in a straight line around these uh, Bollinger Band midlines here. And so uh, you, we've tagged it bullishly. That does mean that we get another chance to be up here, right? That's why we're getting a little bit of this heart shape. But the question is, when do we explore the other side? Because the other side of the Bollinger Band also gets its fair shot, okay? So I, you know, if we do end up coming down even as low as uh, you know 27,000, which again is that area I don't wanna violate, uh, you know, that would be perfectly normal and it would be perfectly healthy. So just have reasonable expectations, Alpha Fam. Okay, uh, you know what goes up must come down uh, in the world of uh, profit taking in uh, trading. Guys, uh, let's take a look at the six hour because the six hour has a very similar story and uh, you know again, like the message is very clear. Uh, you know, you go up. You come down, you go up, right? It's not it's not just one direction, and we've already gone down for quite a while, so it should have been expected that eventually we were going to come back to the Bollinger Band, perhaps even make a run, and then uh, at some point, 
uh, we're going to come back down. Now, the six hours saying that, yeah, we could have an extended run because uh, these things on the six hour, they're pretty big, okay? Unlike the uh, one hour. So, yeah, yeah, we could get some little chop, you know, based upon the one hour. But uh, based upon the uh, six hour, you know, we still have the potential to keep going to the upside, okay? So maybe that $28,000 is in play, right? And uh, But if we have just a wick down to... Uh, you know, again, that 27,000, um, again, it just, it just really wouldn't be unusual, okay? You can see these weird little wicks all of the time, right? Just, just weird little wicks just in the middle of the run. So just a flash wick and then maybe continue to a 28. That's what I would expect. And maybe that's what that Alpha 9 knockout is kind of symbolizing on the uh, EMAs is that, uh, you know... It, Maybe we're just going to touch back to the Bollinger Bands at some point because of that hourly or because of, uh, you know, this uh, free liquidity over here and, uh, you know, then continue on our way. But I'm not I'm not uh, bearish. I'm just uh, telling you, just be ready for pullbacks, okay? Uh, we have been pumping pretty nicely. Uh, let's go to the daily. And on the daily, you can see why I'm uh, bullish, right? Because uh, we still haven't uh, fully completed the uh, mean reversion on the uh, daily. And on the daily here, you can see that 28,250 area is the uh, Bollinger Band midline. And so, you know, should we just come up here and tag it and then get rejected? Well, that's where that potential squeeze on the five day could come in play. You know, over a couple, the next couple days, and um, you know, just wreck this whole thing. So really, we want to get above uh, 28,250 to be pretty solid. And as we saw by the EMAs, that's going to be where we're a little bit more free and clear. You know, uh, above that 28k uh, zone. So 28k is very important to me. We flip that, and then we can explore to the top side. And if we explore to the top side, then we may even have a, a support resistance flip that then could take us even higher. So these things uh, do play together, and uh, we are uh, just watching to see how these higher time frames play out. Let's go to the three day, which is closing. You can see the three day. Uh, Bollinger Band there is at the 28,400. So again, that the 28 to a 28,500 area, super important. And then what we can see on the uh, five day is that uh, we actually already uh, bullishly tagged the uh, Bollinger Band's midline. Okay, so the requirement for continuing to pump has already been met on the Bollinger Bands. That means we're free and clear to just go, okay? Now, uh, that doesn't mean that this has been validated yet. The conditions are there. So we have conditions, and then, you know, we're in the process of validating it and getting this push, but we haven't had an engulfing candle on those other time frames yet that really takes out that 28K level. So above 28K, I would say that we're validated, right? Above uh, 26.5 was the conditions for the bounce, okay? That 27 to 26.5, those were the conditions. The validation is above that a 28 to uh, you know 28.5. And then confirmation is going to be if we have the support and resistance flip at 30. You see how I work over here, uh, Alpha Fam? It's not just, uh, you know, I'm just claiming that we're going to go to the moon or that it's up only or down only. I'm not saying I predicted. I predicted that. I predicted this, right? No, we have conditions, validations, and confirmations. And then you can choose your risk depending on your own risk profile, your own risk tolerance as to would you like to enter at the riskiest point with the one with the most reward? Would you like to enter at a uh, medium risk, right? But uh, medium reward? Or would you like to enter at the uh, lowest risk, right, to go long? But uh, with the uh, least reward, okay? And so you do have to kind of look at these things in terms of a risk profile because all of this is statistics. All of this is not set in stone. 
And, uh, you know, there could be some institution that just sells tomorrow and we just drop to a uh, heck, right? So, guys, uh, we are uh, looking at these bans currently positively, but, you know, uh, the U.S. government could suddenly sell their Bitcoin tomorrow and then, you know, nobody can do anything about that, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, go to the six hour for some key levels to watch. And uh, here... Uh, we can uh, just, uh, let's see here, I think that probably the first thing we want to do is get just a uh, just a, a reorientation to the uh, channel that I've been marking out here. And you can see that we did hold the candles critical level right on that diagonal. Boom. And then we got the two week critical level that I thought it could take us a week to hold on to. We haven't actually retested it. That's why I think it is possible to come back down to that 27 area because we would retest that level. And if we retest it bullishly, then that would be just it would be a lot stronger structure in my mind. OK, I would actually like to retest um, even as low as 26.5. OK, Um you know, if and even 26, uh, I, I would like to have this kind of W structure, right? Because it's much more supportive. This V shape um, bounce, they're good. It just sometimes it can come down pretty hard, also. So we're currently in the mid channel. Of the uh, of this kind of diagonal range that I pointed out here, and again, most channels, you know, most uh, YouTubes, they're doing like the horizontal channels. I'm trying to again keep it fresh over here, so you guys have a different perspective than what you're seeing on every other channel on YouTube. And you can see we have a mid-channel here uh, between these areas, and so the mid-channel is often a place where we bounce. Okay, so if we do have a rejection here. Again, guys, don't be surprised. And then if we start to build in some structure down here, again, don't be surprised. And then we might even just uh, fly up to that 28.5 where we could just get uh, rejected completely. Or we're going to be looking for those support and resistance flips uh, that are going to be super critical above uh, 28.5 and then above uh, you know 30,500 ish. Okay, so that's what we're looking for on a, a channels basis there. Um, again, for me, I believe that the most critical level is this 26.9 until the two week closes, because until then we're just playing around. Okay, the two week is in control of this chart. We are on the macro and everything under that is just kids play. Okay, guys, like uh, if, you, if it seems like I've got this under control, it's because uh, when you're going to be a master of the universe in terms of these, uh, you know, charts, you got to grapple with the macro you gotta grapple with those big time frames and it just gives you the confidence on these lower levels to know that you're pointed in the right direction if you're just on the five minute if you're just on the 15 minute you're just going to be constantly in a state of terror as you have no idea uh, where the chart is going and that's how you get shaken out of the market but let's say that you were on the five minute and the 15 minute up here and you're in terror, you're in terror. But on the macro, you know, yeah, I've got support here. I've got support here. I've got support here. So even if I'm coming back down, I'm still looking for a bounce and what a sizable bounce you would have gotten. But these really short term traders got shook out of the market and they could have had the trade of their life. OK, same thing down here when our wick re-entered my support zone on this diagonal, then I had the confidence to start telling people to to prepare to go long. OK, and everyone else was saying, oh, we're all going to die. We're all going to die. It's over. It's game over, man. And uh, here we are, you know, a couple days later. OK, I haven't had to update my videos. They've all had to make new videos. I haven't had to update my videos and uh, we're already halfway up the area that I was suggesting is possible for us to climb. Now, again, we often see rejections on the mid channel and that would suggest that 28K area could be a pretty serious limitation if we don't just get a pullback here to make some bullish structure, okay? And it could also mean that uh, 28.5, 
<laughs> right here, and also uh, 29 up here. Okay, so that also corresponds with our EMAs and our Bollinger Band uh, midlines that we've already reviewed. So all of this is playing together, and you understand the uh, key levels that I'm looking at in terms of uh, those very serious areas. Now, let's just uh, take those off and uh, take a look at the old six hour chart, uh, what I was showing you in uh, one of the last couple episodes. And lo and behold, uh, we had the alpha momentum pool down here where we did just kind of chop around. And again, guys, I don't control the timing of this stuff, okay? Like I can't control whether it falls back down and swims around in the pool or if it loses support. You guys do because you guys are the people buying and selling. Right, So if you're buying and selling, then uh, you're controlling the direction of the price. I'm just telling you what are the critical levels that are going to uh, suggest where we could pump right, and where we might tap. And so by getting above uh, this uh, hold momentum, we were able to stabilize. And then creeping out, you see that one little candle creeping out of the bearish control zone, Boom, <laughs> right? Boom, guys, right to the next uh, level that I had pointed out there, this uh, neutral point of control because we got free from the bearish control zone and uh, you know it's like we got released from prison. And so we immediately ran for freedom to the neutral area, uh, which we are currently trying to flip. Uh, originally, uh, in our first attempt, we got rejected from it. Like the security guards from the prison, they said, hey, get back to your cells. But, uh, you know, we were just so bullish. We uh, continued to uh, push and we're almost on the um, on the bullish side of the RSI right now. But uh, we are just contending with this neutral point of control. Again, if we get rejected, you know, one or two more times, uh, this thing... Uh, could just lose its confidence and come back here. And so don't be surprised if we uh, just retest that kind of uh, 27 area. I'm trying to show you the story of the price action, okay? And should we flip this area? Well, look, 28.4. Wow, that number comes up a lot, right? Uh, guys, uh, let's put a new six-hour chart on because uh, we did enter a new level. Previously, we were down here. Now we're up here. And so uh, pretty much the same picture, except uh, the uh, case for bullishness has actually come down. The threshold has lowered because of uh, the changes in the market, right? And so uh, when uh, this price action is showing a bullish configuration, then we can bring the bullish control zone down. And so now that's at 27.8. Uh, I still personally feel that a 28,000 is a more critical level. Um, you can see like these candle bodies over here. You can see this candle wick over here. 28,000 is really what I want to capture in the long run. But uh, again, on the six hour, we are going to be in the bullish control zone above 27.8. So that suggests that it's front runnable. OK, that's, the, that's like the front run level. OK, uh, we could get rejected by that and uh, try again. Uh, what we don't want to do is fall into this uh, momentum pool. Uh, but we do have the volatility pivot all the way down here at 26.7. So currently above the uh, momentum pool, above the volatility pivot, bullish bullish and then uh, bullish control zone is in striking distance. Uh, let's see here. Let's do uh, our uh, key levels uh, for the daily. And for the daily, uh, we are going to see a little bit of uh, a little bit of a different picture in that no, actually this this looks pretty good, except, uh, yeah, except that we're still trying to get to that neutral point of control on the daily, okay? So, again, like the six hour, that's just like a partial day trading stuff, okay? Like, obviously, we're bullish on the day. But for uh, the next couple days, are we really that bullish? Well, no, we're not out of the woods yet, and we're not even at the neutral point yet. But, but we did uh, escape the bearish uh, control zone. And we did free ourselves from the alpha momentum pool. So 
that does suggest that we can continue uh, potentially to pump uh, to the neutral point of control at 28k, which again is that number that just keeps coming up and coming up. And then uh, again, like our big test is going to be flipping that area. And then we could perhaps come all the way up to the bullish control zone at 30. This may drop a bit, so it could be 29 in the future. And uh, we'll take that one by ear. But uh, again, I'm just looking for 28k, guys. Okay, like we really need to get above 28k. And uh, currently, we're not going to lose the momentum that we've picked up unless we drop below 27,430. But we'll still have a general continuation above 27,260. And bears don't get back into control unless we're under 26,800. Volatility pivot at our back. Momentum pool at our back. Bullish, bullish. Okay. Let's go ahead and go to the uh, old three day because you can see that. On the uh, older three-day chart, we did have just kind of a total breakdown from the alpha momentum pool, and you can see why, right? You guys know how to trade my system now, right? Volatility pivot was above our head, okay? Uh, the momentum pool, as soon as we got under it, we were under the volatility pivot, and we were under the momentum pool, and so what happened? Just super crash, right? Just super crash, uh, because uh, obviously we didn't have the volatility pivot, we didn't have the momentum pool on our side, guys. Uh, you know, so all of this was pretty uh, terrible, and we just went. I mean, just look what happened. I mean, you know, wouldn't these levels have been helpful? <laughs> look what happened. We just came straight down to my neutral point of control that I had already marked out in advance for you. Congrats, Alpha Fam. If you took that short, congrats. You had all the tools you needed in order to take that short. And uh, you know, it's sometimes it's just as simple as that. Got the volatility pivot, got the momentum pool, or are you losing them? Okay. And so for the three day, it had to come back and tag the neutral point of control. And unfortunately, that means that it got reset. Uh, and so we have some work to do. And so here's the uh, three-day chart in an update. And you can see that we are uh, still at that neutral point of control. So that's good. That thing didn't move. Uh, it is at our back. So it is. we are on the bullish side of the chart still. Bears don't get in control on the three-day unless we drop below 23,270, one of those key areas we don't want to lose. And, um, you know, but if we do explore down there, maybe we could grab some liquidity and maybe we hold there, okay? So don't be too terrified if that does happen, okay? We had this drop. We might have another drop, but uh, we just want to bounce from it. That's what we want. You know, you want to be scared of losing that area. You don't want to be scared of you know, just tagging some liquidity. That's rocket fuel to go up. And, um, you know, you can see the work that we have to do to get to the volatility pivot is that's 29,210. So on a three-day basis, you know, it could take multiple periods of three days. You see this this fall took a long time. So the climb could take a long time. It could take a couple of weeks. Uh, you know, that's what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at that 29K area and then you can see bulls don't get into control unless we're above 30,400. So once again, just validating the concept that in order to push up, we need to be above uh, 30,500. And also, uh, you can see that it we are really in a point of indecision on these higher time frames as long as we're in a momentum pool and then uh, below the volatility pivot. Okay, that's just going to bias us to the downside no matter what. Okay, even if we're pushing up, as long as we're below this volatility pivot, we're going to be biased to the downside. Now, this might come down after uh, today's closure. Again, the three-day is closing um, in uh, six, seven hours. And so at the end of the day, because of this pullback, the volatility pivot may come down, and that could lower the barrier for us to continue to pump. But as long as we're oriented like this, you can expect that overall our bearishness uh, our, pardon me, our, uh, our bias is to the downside. Um, but yeah, we're holding the neutral point of control. So, you know, the, the, the three days doing its job. Let's go over to the uh, five day. And we can see that on the five day, it's uh, a very similar picture, very similar picture to the three day. 
Um, we are above the neutral point of control. So again, we're on the bullish side of the chart, guys. Okay, like underneath that is the bearish uh, chart. So anything above the neutral area, all of this is bullish. But the question is, in our position currently, do we have a bias to the upside or do we have a bias uh, to the downside? And here we have the volatility pivot down here. And we're also toying with the bottom of the momentum pool. Well, you remember what happened on the three-day, right? On that older three-day chart that I showed you. Right, when we got underneath the momentum pool and underneath the volatility pivot, we just plummeted, right? And so that's why I'm showing you the five day. It's really critical that we get above uh, the hold momentum level at 27,625. We need to be above there and just then we can just swim around. OK, sort of like what we're doing on the three day. We can just swim around. But we are going to need to capture that $29,000 area uh, as soon as possible. Now, the five day has a long time period to work on. But again, should it close in seven hours, Underneath the momentum pool, underneath the volatility pivot, the five day could really give us a headache. Okay, so just be aware of that. And then what happened on that uh, three day? We came all the way down to the uh, neutral point of control. Where's the neutral point of control on the five day? It's at 25,500. So we could push into that area, even have wicks below and then perhaps uh, you know s settle at it or have a little war between the bulls and the bears at it should we lose this area um, so again guys just we did the we did the thing that we needed to do with a 27 okay and within a week we still need to be at 27 for the two week chart but for these uh, medium time periods okay what we're finding out is that we really need to be closer to 28 OK, just to be swimming around safely. And preferably above 29. Okay, That's what these charts are telling us. And so there is a very high chance that we could get rejected here. And so today is going to be very important. It may not look like it at the end of the day that it's that important, but it's going to be very important. OK, so just be aware of what's going on here and make sure to take your profit if you've made any profit on these moves uh, make sure that you're always taking your profit in a downtrend you can see lower high right that's a downtrend lower high lower low that's a downtrend so always be taking your profit in a downtrend you don't have to be loyal to these coins guys they're not going to be loyal to you put food on your table don't be a perma bear don't be a perma bull. Just be a clever little alpha monkey, guys, and take your profits, all right? All right, guys, I think I'm going to end it there. Uh, yeah, I mean, since I've already kind of stretched this video out uh, so long, we, might as, we may as well just do a little bit of an analysis on uh, volatility. So let's go over here and take a look at the uh, one hour. The one hour is uh, pushing shut on its uh, volatility here. And uh, that does suggest that, uh, you know, this push, this push sideways here uh, could be coming to a close. And should it want to just continue uh, with this kind of push to the upside, then, um, you know, that might be possible. Let me just kind of close some of this stuff here. So if you see on the uh, one hour, we've basically been in an expansive mode on our volatility uh, to the upside ever since uh, basically the 13th. Of course, we had this first bounce down here on the 12th, but uh, really uh, we've been expanding to the upside on this, uh, this volatility push here. We got a little bit of a flip that put us uh, just going sideways, even a little bit down, but now uh, that is ending, and so the question is, is this going to continue to expand to the upside, or is this going to continue to contract down? If this thing uh, continues to contract down, then uh, we could see a pullback perhaps to grab uh, this liquidity. So again, there's a volatility flip here on the one hour, not really sure. Um, 
if it's going to, I would suggest it's more likely to push than not. I would suggest that this is probably going to continue to push. And oh, wow, we're at 27, 650 already. So that does look like continuation to me. And uh, let's go ahead and go to the uh, six hour. The six hour likewise had a contraction here, but uh, now it's getting uh, an expansion. Uh, let's see, the last contraction had us going down. The last expansion was really this boost right here. And so, yeah, we could get a sizable boost out of this. This is also expanding on the six hour and it's also having a bias to the upside. Let's go ahead and look at the daily. Now the daily had a contraction as we were uh, dipping down here and then an expansion to the upside. It's not finished yet. This move is starting to pinch off, which I don't like. Uh, because that suggests a limitation on our move. Maybe that 28.5, you know, 28, 29 area could be the limitation of this move. And then a greater pullback could happen. I don't know if this uh, this uh, consolidation has fully run its course yet, so we could see more downside um, if this thing pinches shut on the daily. But uh, for right now, at least it's saying that it's, it's still open-minded to pushing up. So... The day doesn't look the best. You can see it's starting to turn down in terms of this expansion to the upside, but um, it's not pinched off yet. So again, like those smaller time frames are going to do whatever they can do in the time being. Uh, for the uh, three day, three day is starting to get into a huge period of time, and you can see that ever since the bottom, ever since the bottom of the market, we've you know at 16, 17k, we've really been pushing up. Off of this expansion here, we had a contraction, which then uh, saw a pullback, and then we started to expand again to the upside, and then uh, we topped out, guys. We topped out, okay? Uh, volatility is direction neutral, so you cannot predict which direction you're going to go when you have a volatility flip. That's why I can't just tell you up or down, okay? Like this chart, it, it, it's counterintuitive. A lot of people get wrecked off of these indicators because they think it, this means up and this means down. That's not the case. Okay, guys, it, it depends on a lot of other factors. Now we're pushing to the downside. I mean, sorry, uh, now we've been uh, contracting uh, to the downside here um, as we've just been contracting on the charts. And uh, we are above the 10%, uh, but we're not above 20% yet. And so it's a little bit front running to say that uh, this is going to expand to the upside. It could easily expand to the downside heavily, okay? But uh, the three day is suggesting that we are going to enter an era of expansion, which, suge which suggests to me that the next move, either up or down, is going to be fairly violent, okay? And it's going to be a very similar magnitude of what we saw over here. Uh, let's just take like 50, uh, you know, a 50% measure of that. So that could be a 40% move. Okay. So that could be something like, you know, that brings us all the way to 20 K. It could be something that brings us, you know, to, uh, you know, even the mid thirties. Okay. So, you know, this expansive move, when it finally triggers, it could be something to be reckoned with, guys. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the five day. And the five day is still contracting. So, and it's been contracting since here. And this one is not done yet, but it is almost flooring. And it has had some pretty interesting V-shaped bounces in the past. Not much to do with this one. I just want to see, I want to see the five day start to tick up. I want to see it tick up. I don't want to see us continuing to tr contract to the downside because we could hang out at the floor for a long time. And that, you know, since we're contracting to the downside on the five day, that could just, you know, it could just smear us, okay, across the floor. It could be, it could be very bad on the five day. So what I want on the volatility pivot, I mean, on the uh, volatility uh, here is for a, uh, just a check up, okay? And while we're getting a little bit of a boost here, if we're getting a little bit of a boost in price while this thing checks up, then I'm going to say, okay, this thing's probably not going to happen. Just statistically, probably not going to happen. But as long as we're breaking down from the bullish control zone and we're still contracting to the downside 
and price action is moving to the downside on the five day, then we could easily just get smeared across this chart to the downside. So the five day uh, closing and uh, you know the five day chart updates is going to also be extremely important and just as powerful as the three day, but the five day will have uh, you know um, more impact. And then of course, uh, ultimately, what I'm looking for is the uh, two week because I do believe that we are being driven by the two week. And so you can see that ever since the bottom of the market, we've been driven up on this volatility push. We are at a volatility pivot on the two week, but it hasn't closed yet. There's a slight gap there. If we can stay above some critical levels on the two week, then we can slide this to continue to expand to the upside, right? And that's gonna be in seven days. We can continue to slide to the upside. And so I don't really care what happens too much in the next week, okay? The next week could be bamboozling, okay? It could be confusing. But as long as we close in a position that lets this entire market's push just continue to expand, that's what I'm looking for. The two week is basically our god here, okay, in crypto. Okay, it's not it's not anything underneath it. It's the two week is driving this market. And you can see that this whole bottom of the market was just consolidation on the two week. Okay, you can see that uh, on our drive down from the top of the market, this double top here was just a, con a massive, massive, massive consolidation on the two week. And you can see, uh, here's an, a good example of how volatility is direction neutral. You can see how we had a, uh, expansion to the upside, but the price action went down. OK, so again, like you can't use these, these volatility charts to choose direction. It's, it's completely useless to most people who don't know how to read it. So, uh, again, we had a volatility flip here and then people would have said, oh, yeah, we've been we've been just coming down off of this volatility. We're having a volatility flip to the upside. So probably we're going to moon now. Finally, after all of this, you know, after dropping like 50%, you know, finally, we're going to have a chance to moon. That's what a lot of people thought while looking at volatility. Volatility trading is not easy, guys. But what happened? We just totally tanked, just totally tanked off of this push. It just faster than any of them could believe. And they all got liquidated. They lost all of their money. Okay. And then what happened again? It flipped again, and we pushed down again. Okay, so again, like down, down, down. Okay, it doesn't matter. You know, you have to read a whole bunch of other things to figure out how to uh, how to read volatility. And so that's why I'm interpreting it for you. It's not for the faint of heart. Okay, so please, if you're a beginner, don't um, don't start with volatility trading unless you learn a lot of rules that go along with it. You can easily get yourself liquidated. But uh, so we are going to have a volatility flip coming up here. And as long as we respect my two week critical levels, which I will need to update as we get closer to this time, then we may have the chance for a volatility push to the upside. And if we lose it, there's a good chance we're going to have a significant volatility push to the downside, which in the past, these two week charts, they're nothing to be messed with. Okay, so this, the serious moments are coming up, guys. Uh, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, that was our alpha for the day. Stay safe and happy trading.